Okay, let's look at the functions of epithelial tissue. We've already gone through the basic characteristics of the tissue. We know that it lines a space, it covers things, um, it's avascular, it's, it's tightly packed cells. Uh, one of the things I, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but another characteristic, so add this to your notes, another characteristic of epithelial tissue is it is highly regenerative, uh, meaning it undergoes mitosis, so it's cell division. Uh, and this will become more apparent when we talk about some of the basic functions of tissue and why epithelial tissue is highly regenerative. regenerative. Can't even say it. All right, let's move on. Okay, so um, let's look at the functions. So the first thing, let me do some notes here. And we have the right color. So functions. Functions of epithelial tissue. Uh, in order to do functions, let's let's do um, kind of an example on something, and, and we might be able to visualize this a little bit better. So let's draw part of the body. And uh, as you can see, I have got a master's degree in lack of drawing ability. So, ew, so much for straight lines. Okay. So, okay, that's part of you. Uh, so what we're looking at on this, so let's do, all right, let's just draw a little bit here. It's really hard to draw on these track pads if you haven't noticed. Okay, your eyeballs are up here just to give you, and this, is going to be your mouth. So let's just, you know, you got your lips here. Okay, so you've got your mouth here. Okay. As you can see, this is just really, really good work on drawing. But essentially what we're looking at on here, this is a tube that goes through your body. So what what is this tube? That's going to be your digestive system, beginning with your mouth, ending at the other side. Okay, so that's going to be the anus down here. And what we're looking at is that epithelial tissue lines spaces and covers organs. So what color? So we have, let's do blue. We'll do blue on this one. So we know that we have a lining on the, ugh, boy, that's really bad, okay? So we have this lining on here. This, that lining is epithelial tissue, okay? That makes this space Okay, that is the lumen. Okay, so this is the open space within your digestive system. And we have epithelial tissue that lines the inside of this tube. Okay, we also know that epithelial tissue, uh, let's just stay, I'm gonna put all epithelial tissue as blue, although there are different types of tissues. We know that epithelial tissue lines our body, okay? So this is going to be our skin, okay? And this is our epithelial tissue, this tissue that the function is going to be protection. Okay, so that's gonna be that area, okay? So when you have protection, you are dealing with uh, protection from both internal as well as external surfaces. It protects you from dehydration. So your skin is helping to retain 
water in your body and it prevents it from uh, leaving at too high of a rate. It's protecting it from abrasion. So this is the rubbing on it. So it also protects from various other physical, uh, chemical, and biological agents that it's protecting from. So that's going to be the physical protection. The next video will get into how epithelial tissue is classified. And there's, this might, it, it will make much more sense when we talk about the different layers of epithelial tissue and how it's protecting, okay? The inside surface, okay? So we're looking at that epithelial tissue is going to be um, selectively permeable. Okay, so it's going to allow things to come in uh, or absorb things or it will secrete things. So another function we have uh, going through here. So if we, if we eat some food, let's go through this way. So if we eat some food and this is your piece of steak that you're eating, okay, that steak is being broken down and it has to absorb into your body, okay? So this epithelial tissue has to be permeable or permeable enough to allow those nutrients to pass through it to get to the rest of your body, okay? So part of the function of epithelial tissue is for absorption, okay? So here we've broke down a food whether that's a steak or a Snickers bar, and it's absorbing into your body. And your body, this area, okay, this is where all your digestive organs are, that's where your heart is, where your lungs are. So that's inside the body. In this tube, this is still technically outside of your body. Even though it's inside the body, it's technically outside of the body because this is open to the external environment. So you've got food coming in, you're gonna have it coming back out on the other side, okay? The other portion of, um, or the other function of epithelial tissue, we have absorption here. So we're absorbing nutrients. Here, we are also doing something where we're secreting things. Now the secretion portion of epithelial tissue, and right here I'm, I'm pointing to the digestive system, but this is true for epithelial tissue throughout the body. Secretion can be mucus, it can be hormones, it can be digestive enzymes, it can be sweat, okay? So we have sweat glands on our skin, okay? So if you're exercising and you begin to sweat, that sweat is actually coming from a gland and it is secreting out. Now, the same can be true for glands inside the body, okay? It can be secreting into the bloodstream. That would be like hormones and then your bloodstream carries it around. It can be mucus. So right now we're, we're creating mucus and saliva in our mouth, okay? Those are secretions associated with epithelial tissue as well, okay? So, so far our functions are going to be protection. That protection can either be from physical protection. Physical protection can be uh, physical, it can be chemical, it can be biological. Uh, it's protecting from abrasions. Um, it's selectively permeable on this. And that would apply to both uh, absorption and secretion, or more so on, on absorption. Selectively permeable basically means it will allow certain substances to go through it and restrict others, okay? Our skin is relatively not permeable, okay? You're not going to lay a Snickers bar on your arm and it absorb into your body, okay? Uh, by selectively permeable, certain cells will allow ions and nutrients to pass. Other will just allow gases to pass like oxygen or carbon dioxide. Um, the last little part, 
Now, if I was to come by and touch you on your arm or whatever that abnormal structure is, you would uh, receive that as some kind of a sensation. So epithelial tissue, because it is has extensive um, innervation, it is receptive to a lot of different types of sensations. Now, in your skin, okay, those sensations, uh, we have nerve endings that are in the epithelial tissue as well as the underlying tissue. In our next chapter, we'll talk about that. That's going to be the integument, integumentary system. So the nerve endings within the epithelial work with the dermal nervous tissue, and that's sensitive for touch. It's going to be sensitive to pressure, temperature. It can be sensitive to pain. Nerve endings inside the body, whether it's in here or whether it's in blood vessels, will be sensitive to other variety of of things as well so and there's going to be specialized nerve endings that deal with other things uh, which we'll get into when we're in the, the nervous system chapter so um, that's the key things that we're going to be looking at on uh, functions so let me just write them down here so there's going to be protection and you've got absorption which will be selectively permeable, secretion, and then you have sensations, and you can break each one of those down. So protection can be a physical, it could be abrasive, it can be chemical, it could be biological. Absorption, semi-permeable, secretions, it secretes things from mucus to hormones to digestive enzymes to sweat, a variety of different things and you have the neurological component which is sensitive to various sensations okay so the next one we're going to go by and learn how to classify the different types of epithelial tissue